It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much for uh, making your way to this episode, for checking out the series. If you like what you hear, uh, hit that subscribe button. We do new interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so you get three a week to keep up with all of your favorite artists, discover some new ones, and know what's happening in the music world. So hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date. Find us at all the major spots like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, ACAST, Pod Chaser, wherever you like to get your podcast from. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today I'm going to be talking with Ricky Bird. So he, uh, formerly, I guess, of Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, the original guitarist for the Black Hearts, he's been solo since the early 90s when he became sober. That's part of the story here, because the last couple years, he's become what he calls a recovery troubadour. His latest record is called Sobering Times. Uh, I like it because, of course, it's a title that works not only because of of what he's gone through in his own life, but uh, 2020 as we've all had to go through. It's very sobering times. Ricky's going to tell us about um, playing for recovery music groups, uh, but still keeping the music rough and tumble, as he says. Greasy rock and roll, I believe, is a line from this interview that I I really do love. Uh, We'll discuss uh, addiction and mental health today uh, versus the 80s uh, as he was becoming sober. Uh, There is uh, still a taboo, still a stigma out there, but it is much more in the conversation than ever. So I definitely want to hear his take on that. And, you know, the importance of uh, doing a fun record with a message, showing people that they're not alone and making some great rock and roll while he's at it. So let's get into it. Talking about the record Sobering Times, it's Kyle Meredith with Ricky Bird. Hey, Kyle. How you doing, brother? I'm great, man. It's great to talk to you. First, man, i got to compliment you. This record, Sobering Times, what a hell of a great listen right here. I mean, a classic-sounding album all the way through. Congratulations. Thank you. I love hearing that. That's good. We worked hard on it, man. It took us, like, well, I mean, studio days, it was probably two and a half months, but it it took us over two years to, like, get it all together because of scheduling. So uh, I'm glad to hear people are getting what I put into it and, and getting the, the message that I put in. So do we look at this, I, I don't know if you kind of treat your albums this way, but do you see this as sort of the sequel to Clean Getaway? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm certainly getting better at writing these songs, this kind of song. Um, uh, if, I mean, if you want to be even more to the point of how this happened, it's like I finished Clean Getaway, and then what happens to me is I finish a record and I don't even look at my guitar for like a couple of weeks. It's like it's sitting there on a, I'm looking at it right now sitting on a stand. It's like, nah, I got nothing. And then I pick it up and I start, you know, screwing around with it and something comes, I, or something's like passed down from somewhere and I start playing and I come up with a new song and it's, and it, naturally I started writing another song about um, this lifestyle and changing, changing it. And it also part of that is because what I do uh, before this pandemic hit is I go around the country to, and to treatment facilities, high schools, uh, you know, juvenile detention centers, detention centers, any place that'll have me, you know. Uh, and I do these recovery music groups, um, and I kind of just bring my acoustic, um, and I, you know, I kind of became a recovery troubadour, I guess. So. That's why I'm still in this mode of, of writing these kinds of songs because, I mean, if, if people didn't get anything out of them, I'd probably be onto something, uh, doing blues songs at this point. But I'm getting such a great reaction from people in and out of recovery that, that the message is affecting them and, and it's helping them. Uh, you know, and the fact that I, I kind of wrap it up with some loud rock and roll, I think, is, is ear pleasing to people. I mean, I, I do not preach. There's no preaching allowed on these records. It's just about. Um, throwing the cards on the table, and hopefully somebody hears something that they may need to hear. Well, I think it does say something a lot about your talents, too. I mean, it, it, and, and your sincerity, because it would be very easy, uh, you know, as, as some songs have been written like this, to be a little bit cheesy or preachy, as you say, and that's not the case yeah, here. Yeah. And, and, you know, to be able to to hit, you know, firing on every, all cylinders every single time when you're revolving around one subject. I mean, how tricky is that for you as a songwriter? Um, 
Well, I mean, I do work hard on the non-cheesy aspect of it, <laughs> but uh, I think I think because the music is so uh, rough and tumble uh, on on a lot of the songs in this record that it kind of clarifies uh, this is not a cheesy record. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with cheesy records; it's just not what I do. Uh, you know, the message is the message. It's just the way I present it. I think that uh, makes it a little bit different. Uh, and uh, I just I. At this point, like maybe for Clean Getaway, I was really I had a focus to make sure the songs uh, spoke to this message without being preachy or, or or hokey or something like that. But I think now I kind of got this down a little bit, and I know how to write it because what I do is I play the songs first with my acoustic guitar in a treatment uh, setting, and I could tell from the reaction of the clients that are sitting in front of me, whether I'm onto something or I'm not onto something, or, you know, or I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong message or it's not affecting them or, or I'm not getting through. So I put that song aside and I try another one. You know, for example, the song uh, Just Like You, which is the final song on the record, I love to end with a ballad like I did on Clean Getaway. And, and there's a, I wrote that song Just Like You because I was sitting in front of these people doing these treatment facility gigs. And I said to myself, well, you know, I got, a, I got a, like a, three decades in recovery. I wonder if any of these people are like, oh, he doesn't know how I feel. Like, what does he know? It's been so long. So I wrote this song called Just Like You that goes through the different stage, stages of, of recovery, really. Um, and every time I play it, A, I get kind of chills and, and maybe a little teary-eyed when I, I sing, especially the last verse. Um, and, and I could see the faces of the people sitting in front of me. They get it. So when I get that kind of reaction, I know I'm on the right track, and I just follow my instincts at this point. I don't listen. I don't know what the next. If I do another record, I don't know what what the heck I could do a blues record. I don't know. But right now I'm like in this cool cool mode, and and uh, it seems like I'm helping people. So you know I'm going to stick with it. Absolutely, and I think that's you know one of the most important parts. Uh, you know the uh, things that any artist can do too. Hey, you know I'll bring up that. You know you talk about three decades. You know uh, being sober, mental health and addiction is much more the part of the conversation today than I feel like it's ever been. Are you sensing that out there as well? Because for it used to be, quote, part of the rock lifestyle and a little bit taboo to talk about, but it's definitely in the popular conversation, I feel like, finally. Well, I mean, from what I know uh, for, from statistics, there's, there's about 25 million people in recovery in this country alone, all kinds of recovery. It's not only 12-step stuff. It's like there's a bunch of stuff out there. But, uh, and there's probably about the same amount of people that are struggling. So it, there are a lot of people hurting. A lot of people don't. Uh, they keep it a secret. Uh, you know, they, they hurt in silence. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's certainly more, more of a public. The problem is, is there's still a big stigma about it. Um, why, I don't know. But um, I think it's getting better all the time, um, and I think it's important to talk about because there, there's a lot of help out there now. So I guess an answer to your question is the good thing about it is is there's so much help out there. Like I remember when I first got it in 87, in September 87, uh, there was like a handful of, of treatment facilities. Now, I didn't, I didn't go to treatment. I, I, I just started going to like uh, community support group meetings. And for me, that took, you know. Uh, but now there's treatment facilities all over the country of all different types. Uh, now, are, are, are all of them great? I, I probably not, but I think that the, the vast majority are really great and helpful, and there's a lot of people that are getting it, and there's still a lot of people that are not getting it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are dying. I think this, before this pandemic, I think there was maybe um, 130 or so, 140 people a day dying from opioids alone. And, and, and that, you know, alcohol is a whole other uh, statistic. Um, I think that's like 88,000 people a year or something, you know, alcohol-related deaths. So that could be car crashes, heart disease, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I think it's an important topic. I think a lot of people suffer in silence, which is, is needless at this point. And, and my gig as a, as a, you know, this, this guy that's a rock and roller but also – found the, 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 the solution um, is to say, hey, man, you know, I get it. It's okay. You're not alone. So, like, reach out for help. There's plenty of it out there. Uh, you know, we're there for you. Uh, but people have to reach out first. So hopefully a record like this, people listen to it and say, oh, wow, man, I feel like that too. It's like, yeah, yeah, I went through that. 
and, and it'll give people a little kick maybe to reach out for help. That's what my job is. But, you know, let's not forget, my job is also to play some, you know, greasy rock and roll. So hopefully I did both on this record. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You, you make it the, the message a whole lot of fun. I mean, there's been a, a ton of drinking songs throughout the year, and, and the way you approach it with the flip, even covering Merle Haggard's The Bottle Let Me Down, and kind of the way you give that, uh, you do it so well. And, and again, Ricky, Sobering Times is an important message, but it's also a really, really fun record. So thank you for what you're doing. Yay. You couldn't have said anything uh, better. That's uh, that's that's exactly that's what I want people to hear. It's a fun record, but it's got a, a message that can be serious at times. But there is a solution. And where do they where do people buy this record? They buy it at RickyBird.com. So I can sign copies, and we're, we're going to do a distribution deal like in the next couple of days. We kind of did this backwards, but uh, in the next couple of months, it'll be up on all the usual suspects like Apple and, and um, Amazon and all the others. But right now, you could go to rickybird.com. I'm, I'm literally taking some bags of, of packages of CDs to the post office every couple of days, which is really cool. It's like grassroots rock and roll, and I'm kind of loving this, signing them and sending them. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it all, Ricky. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate you talking to me. Have a great day, man. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. My thanks, Ricky Bird. Again, it's uh, Sobering Times. As he said, uh, head to the website to pick up your own copy right now. Thanks to Ricky. Thanks to you for checking out this episode. Please, before you leave, hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of the interviews that we put out. Again, three times a week, a brand new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, wherever you like to get podcasts from. That does include iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube as well. After that, head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres and music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's a Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at wfpk.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, including uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Kyle Meredith. Please like and follow along there as well. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, I'm Jen, and I love horror movies. I'm Mikey. I'm dead inside, and I also love horror movies. And we really like to torture our friend Todd because he hates horror movies. That I do. And that's why they call me the horror virgin. <laughs> that's the only reason we call him that. I'm not, no other reasons at all. You <laughs> know oh, at all. Lengi. Whatever. So every, <laughs> <laughs> every week, we take him through the encyclopedia of horror, the good, the bad, the ridiculously Jack Frost. <laughs> and then we make fun of it more or less. Or explain its deceptive feminism. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> Our episodes drop on Monday, so check us out. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media.